Hello everybody, this is Amy from Chateau de Rosière. We're finally entering the last push towards finishing um, one of the bedrooms in our coach house. Mark had an excellent idea, which was that we could get used to the plastering by doing the potager. For this week, and this week only, we have Margot helping us, who is going to be helping us with uh, child wrangling, uh, DIY and um, filming. It's early afternoon now, Clement's nap time, so I'd like to try and crack on and finish this by the time he wakes up uh, because my able assistant here seems to be in a good mood too. Um, and just before I keep going, I want to show you what I do to have the kids with me when I'm renovating, which is to have an air quality monitor because um, a lot of the time we think about the dangers of stuff falling on them or equipment but one of the worst things for being in a renovation environment for a young child is uh, what they're breathing in and so we try and keep it as clean as possible and that's one of the reasons we want to move into here in the first place for when we do the major works in there and so i bought an air quality monitor that um, tells me the pm 2.5 which is the harmful size of particles in the air of dust and thing and smoke and things like that and the uh, volatile organic chemicals which is the sort of things that come off paint and are toxic um, nothing i'm using today is of particular danger to her but i would mix the lime outside if she's in here and i just keep this on in the corner to keep an eye on things as we mentioned before, we're doing this special type of lime plaster on the surfaces, the more modern surfaces where the old lime plaster won't adhere. Um, it's, and we're going to kind of try it out first over here. This is the old potager. If you watched our coach house video, um, the tour of it, um, I'll put a link up for you. Uh, you'll have seen what this is, but I'll just briefly explain. Um, 
the coach house was totally ruined when we moved in here, uh, but some of the old features that remained were the upstairs um, where I guess the stable hand or some other uh, kind of uh, employee would have worked, would have lived um, above what was going on beneath. And we decided to keep these features in, uh, which was quite tricky uh, with our planning, and it's probably what made us decide to have two big rooms rather than more small ones. And um, this, the potager, um, has three little grills along here where you would have taken the embers from the fire, put them there, kept your food warm or reheated it, and the ash, the cold ash would have fallen down and been emptied from time to time. And then there's a little sink in the corner and a cupboard over there. And, and it's what remains of somebody who, um, not of somebody, of, of somebody's living experience up here, which we thought was quite powerful. Now, actually, the potager is more recent. This building, like every building here, has so many different phases. And this is probably 19th century because it uses hollow bricks that we've seen elsewhere in the chateau. Um, now, for us, 19th century is modern. <laughs> and although we're not breaking it down, it does stand out and it's a little bit ugly in here. It's the only bit of this old kitchen. So what we want to do is try to make it blend in. So I'm using a, a brown natural pigment to try and uh, cover this up, just to make it not jump out at you as you walk in the room. Because Mark did an initial trial with another brand of this glue, like glued lime plaster um, in white. And as you can see, it's quite um, when you look at it. Um, what I'm first going to do is just tidy up the edges because the idea behind this lime gluey lime plaster, the fascine that I'm using, is to do a very, very thin layer. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is because it's uh, eye-wateringly expensive. <laughs> one bag is 50 euros and we think it might take half a bag to do this. So, and then we've got the natural pigments that aren't cheap as well. So we don't want to be wasting anything, but we also need to blend in the old edges of both um, the bricks and Mark's plaster and um, the yeah other work that's been done up there rather messily. And my task, <laughs> which she's looking forward to apparently, is to neaten that up so it doesn't require huge um, blobs of the very valuable fascine to fill in holes. <laughs> That's really satisfying. Yep. Oh yeah. You have to be a tiny bit careful um, when you're chipping it away because granite actually chips really, really easily. Really carefully taking back the the uh, plaster here so that I don't have to plaster too far over the stone and just to make it look a bit neater. Can you tell I used to be an archaeologist? <laughs> Very happy in the company of a trowel or a chisel. So here you can see some of the old brick that's kind of rubble that was put to hold this metal bar in place. So I obviously can't take that out, otherwise the whole thing will fall down. But I can smooth it up a little bit.
done a reasonable job on this today behind me. Uh, I had hoped to do the plastering, but these things never work out as planned. And to be honest, I don't know why I forget the fact that um, if I get one and a half hours of work done in a day, <laughs> then it's a winner uh, because uh, there are many delightful breaks uh, involving children the rest of the time. And it's so lovely out there that I'm going to go and spend the last couple of hours of um, their day with them. I have to put aside my beloved um, jackhammer because it was getting a bit hair raising around the edges of the bricks. They're really delicate and hollow and I felt like they were going to explode. Um, so my backup here is to fill the holes, the big holes, because I did get a bit carried away at the bottom and there are some loose bits of plaster that I fear would come back to haunt me in the future if I didn't deal with them. And to make a smooth edge down here, I thought it'd be easier to use plaster at this stage than to use the um, fascine. Because, partly because the fascine is so expensive, but also because it wasn't designed to fill holes, it was designed to cover surfaces. And I don't really want to faff around building up uh, surfaces there. Mark thinks I'm completely mad. This was a very simple task he gave me and I was supposed to just put a piece of um, masking tape down there and plaster up to there and forget about it. But I have become a little bit obsessed with this now, uh, making an absolutely perfect job of it. And I'm really enjoying myself, I have to say. <laughs> okay. I'm not trying to make it perfect, just relatively even. I've covered up the floor because the last thing I want to do is get this onto our lovely, lovely tiles. Yeah, so it's already going off. <laughs> I see what Mark meant about that. Quick, quick, quick. I'm gonna shove the rest in some bigger holes. I'm finding it easy to, easiest to put it in place with my fingers almost. I mean, it's only ever, it's supposed to still look quite organic, not some big clean line. She says getting her excuses in early, but um, I just wanna cover up the major dips. As a former archaeology student, um, it always fascinates me how things acquire value simply by being old, because something like this was, um, at its time, was just thrown together for somebody who was poor, um, who uh, of little value at the time, and they just needed to eat. And you can see it's so roughly done, even the historical part of it. And yet, because it's old, it's of as much value to us and we're taking as much care of it as we are on any single part of the chateau. And it's quite nice. I mean, as a, when you are studying things for archaeology, you're only ever taking things apart. You're not really doing anything to them afterwards. So it's quite nice to go back and, and give it the care that it never had when it was first made. Um, I brought Mark in to ask him about what the... the <laughs> He's been busy spraying himself with water in the garden, Julia. And I brought him in to ask him how he wished that colour, which is the one we agreed upon doing this. And as we've been chatting... And the answer was a very quick random, random, random amount, amount of... Uh, well, I knew that would be the answer, but I thought you might at least, if you stood with me, be able to tell me what it looked like. And standing with you. <laughs> but as we looked at it, we were discussing whether that was the best colour. Because the difficulty is what we, we're not going to ever be able to replicate the, the normal line plaster. Um, so do we want something that's a bit too close to it or will that make people say, oh, you tried to colour match it, but you couldn't? Or do we do something that doesn't stand out to the eye, but is obviously different? I don't think people really care to be honest. attention to detail. Mm -hmm. 
but we were just discussing whether actually the ochre marron might be nicer. It's a nice warm colour. It's got a little bit of pink mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. It's a... Would you like me to do a trial or would you like me to just put a random colour on there and get it done? Uh, I guess the second option. Well, that's, no, that's the one I'm sure you want me to do. Um, so what did you ask me? No, I probably do. Well, what I want is for you not to be able to blame me later when I don't do a trial and it turns out not as we wanted it. In an ideal world, in a world where we have more than two hours every day without interruptions to do stuff, I'd probably do trials, but right now I'm thinking it's probably going to be... Yeah, just show us a random, <laughs> random colour on. Weirdly, the tobacco looks really close to the grout Doesn't on it? camera. It does, oh and it's over here. Oh, I don't know what to do. Just pick a random color. Take the green one. At least people will see it's intentional. You realize I've blocked you out now, don't you? Because <laughs> you decided not to give helpful comments. If you can. Do you need oh! a hand? That is heavy. It's 25 kilograms. Oh, this is jolly nice out here. So, if I need, if it does, each bag does five to six square meters. We worked out basically six kilograms should do a square meter, and that's probably a bit less than a square meter. So, I might try five kilos. <laughs> never know the chickens that's either someone's laid an egg or somebody's being attacked and there's very little difference in their shouting one bucket is 1.7 kilos bucket two also 1.7 kilos i'm finding some consistency here so that's 3.4 kilos right so one more bucket and I think I might try that so that means if it's four and a half to six liters of water per sack and each sack is 25 kilos so five kilos that's one fifth so that's about uh, one liter or a little bit more maybe of water doesn't seem like a lot for that mm -mm. this is probably the most scenic building site ever <laughs> <laughs> it's very valuable stuff baking so margot and i have decided to go with the tabac the original colour that we looked at because we think it goes better with the floor. Uh, we're not going to tell Mark, we're going to see if he notices. Uh, because Margot's involved, it's not a unilateral decision. <laughs> but I don't totally remember what it looked like when I did the test. Um, I think we can't go far wrong with it though because light or dark, it's a nice colour. That's heat, three heaped baby food spoons. <laughs> uh, right, I'm ready to 
this starts. My first ever plastering, actually, I think. I think. Um, and I have this, as Mark was using the other day, um, which actually has more use right now. So I'll put it on the wall, spread it out, and then uh, smooth it over using this, which in French is a long doucha, um, or long doucha, long doucha. It's a, a cat's tongue. <laughs> film my first attempt at this should I should have waited till I look like a pro <laughs> we can film again later <laughs> <laughs> that's some pro action <laughs> thank goodness Mark's not here oh look will you oh dear don't they have like a board professional class yeah probably yeah they well, um, they, they have get watched on with it and make learn it myself, doesn't he? he? Doesn't like to actually help me learn no. know how to do it. Learn from your own mistakes. Yeah. But I think they do have a board, and they like scoop it up, plop it on the board, and then smush the board against the wall. <laughs> but we don't have that keyboard smusher no, component. I feel like I've watched enough of this old house to know how they, not to, not to know how to do it per se, but how they do it. The great thing is that it's just, uh, it's almost like painting with this. It's not, it's a really thin layer. So. Everyone's got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. I was hoping you wouldn't see this part. Yeah. It's nearly done. Nearly finished. Well, we had an issue with the um, mixer running out of. Oh. Um, also, I don't know how to plaster, so that's been a minor issue as well, getting it actually on the wall. It looks a bit thick, doesn't it? I don't know, you wouldn't tell me what it looks like! You're right, I, you are. I, I told you to have water until it, it looks right. Yes, but I don't know what right is, do I? Because I've never done it before. You are unhelpful in the extreme. I'm very helpful, and you have not done I am actually, but I'm hoping it's going to look better than the birthday cakes I've been making recently. It looks a bit <laughs> Looks a bit like uh, the content of a nappy. Oh, Mark! <laughs> Don't listen to him, baby girl. Uh, can I uh, suggest something? I wouldn't doubt that you would. Yeah? Okay, well. No, 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 carry on, I mean. <laughs> you know more than me. Yes. I think uh, if I were you, I'd be a little bit wary of uh, it setting uh, quickly, so I would uh, hurry up spreading. To do the main bit. Yeah, spreading. I was just thinking that actually. Because the, if you do uh, yeah. a part and it dries, it, so the risk is that it will uh, look. Uh, it could yeah. be a different color from the rest. So I would put the put it over the whole surface yeah. and then do the finishing. Yeah. I was I was going to ask you actually how long it takes to set. Yeah. That's the thing. Well, you have time, but. Uh, uh, also, I think it could be easier if you if you put it. Uh... <laughs> Don't forget to rake. I'm raking, but it's getting me on the damn pool in the first place. That it's causing me the challenges. 
I need, we decided I needed one of those class, those boards. It's filling one of those boards. You know, that plasterers have. Oh, there's one in the gallery. Oh. Why don't you kick No, I, well, so you could use a bigger shovel. You told me to use this one. Yeah, this one's good for the finishing. Yeah. But for the spreading itself. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. You can use a bigger one. Would you get me one then, please? Okay, I'll get you a little bit of trouble. Thank you. So you can do it for tomorrow. <laughs> you want to give that to help you? My baby girl, she'll be more help than you. <laughs> mm? Nothing? <laughs> bit crucial because it's starting to set and the whole point of using this fascine rather than just painting or um, uh, and having a flat surface is to make it look more organic like the proper line plaster so the, but, but because it's got the glue in you could actually make it completely perfect so the key here is I've got to make it look um, <laughs> roughish but not a total mess and I can do some of it at this point and then I can also brush it and scrape it a bit when it's slightly more dry I'm starting to get a bit anxious about how, how it looks. <laughs> We're just working out the sweet spot between too rough and not rough enough at the moment. And I've got to do the bottom. What it are your is thoughts? beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Is it beautiful, Clemor? Beautiful. Oh, yeah, beautiful. 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 I'm finding that actually using my hands to do the finish is quite a nice finish because it drags some sand around on it, but it smooths over the trowel edges. 
think. Yeah, um, the bits around the edge here, do they need to be more blended into the stone or? I think it's, uh, I think it's nice to the way you did it. What about the little bit? Is that nice enough? Yeah, it's pretty good. I've tried to round it a bit. Yeah, maybe around this bit of the section. It looks like um, um, Adobe houses in New Mexico. I think it does, doesn't it? It'll dry a lot lighter than this. It's a good idea to do like this. No, 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 two more, no. We <laughs> do <laughs>